everyone, this is Callie. Thanks so much for being here today. I'm sharing a really fun and super easy technique that I've shared in the past, but I thought we could revisit it again because the Alessa background cling stamp is perfect for this technique. And I thought I would showcase the stamp. A lot of times people don't know what to do with background cling stamps like this because they're solid. And some people might even think that it's kind of limiting. So I wanna share this process with you because I felt like we could make it super colorful but we can also make a cool technique out of it by giving it a faux watercolor look using some distress inks. To begin, I'm going to put this in my Misty. So I've removed the foam pad because the cling already has some nice height to it. And we're going to need some watercolor paper. Distress watercolor cardstock is perfect for this. It's nice and thick and still lends to some absorption. And I'm using the pre-cut A2 size form. It does come in full size sheets that you'll just have to cut down on your own if you don't have any A2 sized cut already. So I placed it in my Misty and I did put some adhesive on my Misty back so that the paper stays put. Now I've got a rainbow of distress inks here and we're going to make this super colorful. I'm spreading out three different sections of color and you want to keep the colors next to each other so that they blend well. So it goes from red to to purple or pink, um, but you want to keep like colors together. So you'll kind of see here that as I add and dab on color, the greens kind of blend into the blues of the other sections that I started out with. So everything blends together nicely. Like so here I'm adding in the purple and it's going towards the red. So it kind of completes the spectrum of the rainbow full on this background cling stamp. So super easy here. I do go back in with the red. I felt like it looked kind of muted once I added the rest of the colors, but then you'll see once I stamp it, the red really does show up really well. So I may have not had to do that. So I'm gonna spritz it with some water to kind of wet that ink. And when it's applied over your watercolor cardstock, look at the results. So this is a very vibrant color. And you can see that the colors really blend nicely together. And this is such a fun and easy way to add color to a solid background stamp. So you can see that there's also more ink on that background stamp. I'm gonna stamp again, and I'm not even gonna apply additional ink. All I'm gonna do is use my Distress Sprayer again and spritz that image with additional water and then stamp again. And you'll see even though it doesn't look like there's a lot of ink left on that stamp, there really is because it's gonna transfer an additional rainbow on to my cardstock. This watercolor look is just so pretty. I'm gonna pull in that first panel and show you the difference between the two. See, it's a little bit more muted, but the colors still are vibrant and pretty. So I'm gonna do it a third time just cause I, I wanna show you that you can. And a lot of people would probably prefer the lighter background anyway. So I just wanted to show you the difference between the three different images. So that light panel was a little bit too light for me. So I'm deciding here between the first panel and the second panel, and I settled on the second. I thought that was a happy medium between the really bold and the really light panels. Now to create a border, I'm just gonna cut off a quarter inch off two of the sides. So we're gonna have a small mat on an A2 size card base. When I have a really full background like this, I like to add things to it that is gonna break up the colorful and busyness of it. So I'm using an A2 nesting frame and I'm gonna die cut it with some rose gold metallic cardstock. And I'm going with rose gold this time instead of my usual regular gold because I wanted it to look a little more subtle. So as you can see here, I've also die cut three additional frames in white cardstock and I'm just gonna stack them up for dimension. On another card that I made for this release using this frame, I used some foam strips and I found that because the frames are so delicate, it's more difficult to line it up perfectly on a card. So stacking it makes it a little bit more sturdy and it helps it get lined up a lot easier. I've placed a large acrylic block over that to help hold everything down while I work on the sentiment. This is the Kathy Zilski Happy Die. And I'm gonna do the same thing as I did for the frames. I'm gonna die cut the top piece using the rose gold metallic cardstock. I'll also die cut three layers in white just to stack it for some additional support and dimension. And then I'll die cut the shadow piece in vellum. Here I'm stacking the happy words together using some liquid adhesive. Then I'll attach it to that shadow vellum layer 
and again use my heavy acrylic block to hold that in place while I continue to work on the sentiment. This is the happy combo set and as you can see that word happy does coordinate with that happy die and I'm just going to use a stamp from that stamp set to emboss a sub sentiment over some black cardstock. I use some clear embossing ink and now I'm adding some white embossing powder and then I'll heat set that strip. Off camera, I'll go ahead and cut that down into a nice and even strip and then I'll lay it over that background but I'm not gonna adhere it down just yet. I wanna make sure that there's plenty of space for this world dragonfly. It is also from the Be Bold release and it's very pretty. And I've die cut the wings in vellum and then for the body of the dragonfly, I used a little strip here that I cut out of an A2 sized panel of holographic rainbow cardstock. And I like the A2 size because because the rainbow is tighter, if it makes sense, um, and you get more color from a little die cut like this. So I cut a piece that blends from blue to purple, and it's perfect for a dragonfly's body since it's kind of iridescent. So I've glued it together, and I've, I'm using my reverse tweezers to kind of hold that together while it dries, and I'm using it to lay down my sentiment as well as the dragonfly. Okay, so once I have everything adhered down, I'm going to adhere this panel to a card base. And then I like to embellish everything once my card panel is on a card base. And I'm gonna be using these rainbow dazzling gems. These are so cool. I'm gonna put them up close here so you could see how they change colors and you can see the multi-colors that are on each gem. They're super fun and I thought it would coordinate with this rainbow card well. So I'm gonna do three at the top and two below the sentiment. And the place and score tool is a perfect tool to apply these dazzling gems with. And if you're interested, there are bundles on the website that sell the triangle trays as well as the tool and an assortment of different colored gems. So be sure to check that out on the website. If you're interested in any of the products that I use today, be sure to check out the links below as well as on the coordinating blog post. I hope you enjoyed this card. I hope you enjoyed the technique that I shared. Thank you so much for stopping by and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye everyone. Hi there, I'm Heidi, Simon's mama and founder at simonsaysstamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.